Good afternoon and welcome everybody. For those that are present with us at Eden Park today, please find a seat and we will start Vulcan's 2022 annual meeting of shareholders. Welcome to this meeting, Vulcan's first annual shareholder meeting as a listed company, but it's 26th since its incorporation in 1995. My name is Russell Chenu and I'm an independent director and chair of the board of Vulcan Steel. I will also be chairing our annual meeting today. I'm informed that in accordance with Vulcan's constitution, we have a quorum present, and so I now declare this meeting formally open. As already noted, our meeting today is Vulcan's inaugural annual shareholder meeting since listing on the ASX and the NZX on the 4th of November 2021. On behalf of the board and the team at Vulcan Steel, we are glad that you are able to join us today for our annual meeting. We are running a hybrid meeting today, so we have shareholders with us at Eden Park, and we also have shareholders joining us online via the Link Market Services online platform. Welcome all. Our online participants should be able to hear us and PowerPoint presentations. They should be able to vote and they should also be able to ask questions. Just before we get started, we should cover off a few housekeeping points. For those with us at Eden Park, in the case of an emergency, please head out the doors that you came in. As we are on the fourth floor, we will need to use the stairs, not the lifts, and the stairwell is located just after the lift bay, out that door. Our assembly point will be in the car park at the back of this south stand by gate F. Should we be required to evacuate, Eden Park staff will be able to help us all get out of this building safely. The toilets, if you need them, are back through the doors that you came through. We will take questions at the end of each of the presentations as we go through the six resolutions and any general questions at the end of the meeting. After the closing of the meeting, we invite you to join us for a cup of tea or coffee and some afternoon tea. For those online, if you do have any technical issues during the meeting, Please ring, Lark, please ring Link Market Services Helpline. If you are in New Zealand, the telephone number is 0800 200 220. And if you are in Australia, the number is 1800 990 363. If you do have questions, please submit them via the online platform as soon as you can. The PowerPoint slide shown identifies where the Q&A tab can be located on the online platform. Submitting questions early will ensure that your questions can be answered at the appropriate time. So although you can submit questions from now on, I will not address them until the relevant time in, in the meeting. If there are any questions, whether asked online or from the audience today, relating to the same sim or similar subject matter, we may amalgamate those questions together and answer them in one response. This will help us with the flow and timing of the meeting. For shareholders with us in the room, can I ask that you please give your name when speaking to the resolutions and to confirm if you are a shareholder or a proxy holder. During question time, roving microphones will be available to ensure that your comments or questions are conveyed to everyone present and online. Please wait for the microphone to be brought to you prior to asking your question. We will try to get through as many questions as possible. We apologise in advance for any questions submitted online that we are unable to answer due to time constraints. For any such question that we do not have time to respond to or which we consider requires a more detailed response, 
our investor relations team will contact you and we will endeavour to provide you with a written answer either to your registered email or your postal address. We will also publish any written answers on our investor website, which can be accessed through Vulcan's main website, www.vulcan.co. First of all, I would like to introduce my board colleagues. To my right, we have Peter Wells, Pip Greenwood, Wayne Boyd, and Rhys Jones. To my left here is Carolyn Steele and Adrian Casey. We also have Bart de Haan, who is dialing in today from the Netherlands. Hi, Bart. Sitting beside me on the left is our company secretary, Sarah Jane Lawson. There are currently eight directors, including myself, and a brief summary of each of our backgrounds has been included in Vulcan's latest annual report and on the company's website. Three of our directors, Wayne Boyd, Adrian Casey and myself, are seeking re-election as directors today and we will each speak to you before the resolutions are put to a vote. Also in the audience today is our Chief Financial Officer and New Zealand CFO of the Year, Ka Yu Yo, and our Chief Information Officer, James Wells. Not sure where James is, is he? Yep, at the back, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, we also have a number of our leadership team with us today, Christine Burns, Zubair Khan and Melanie Andrew. The Vulcan team should be easily identifiable by their name badges. And some of the team also have a Vulcan branded vest or jacket on. I encourage you to speak to our team after we finish the meeting today. The team will also be assisting with reading out any online questions submitted by shareholders during the meeting. Deloitte is Vulcan's external auditor, and here from Deloitte is Andrew Boyven. Andrew is available to answer any questions directed to his audit team. Also present with us are representatives from our legal advisors and our share registrar, Link Market Services. We will now show a short video showcasing some of the Vulcan team, which provides some insight of what our employees think about working at Vulcan. Morning. Morning all. How are we? Morning Sam. Morning my brother. Another day. Just that small morning shift, you know, coming in happy, going home happy. It's normally pretty busy here, particularly in the mornings. Just making sure everyone gets their material on time. The people that we've got is what makes it tick. I love my job because I work with just a bunch of good people. We all can have a banter, we can, you know, have a laugh, but we also do our job. We want people to grow and move forward and, yeah, make the most of the opportunity. You can do multiple jobs, which is not boring. You are constantly busy. We're all on the same level across the whole company. Your ideas are valued, they're listened to. That's just what comes with Vulcan. You can genuinely be the best person that you can be, as well as live the life that you want to live. Love my kids, love my family, and Vulcan understand that. You're always part of the team and you always belong. It's a good company, I'm telling you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you to the team that put that together. Now moving to the agenda and the order of events for today's meeting. First, I will be saying a few words. Following that, Rhys Jones, Vulcan's Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, will present on Vulcan's performance and activity over the last financial year, and also give an update relating to uh, acquisition and integration of Ulrich Aluminium. Following the conclusion of, conclusion of both of our presentations, we would be happy to answer any questions you may have. We welcome any feedback. Then we will turn to the formal business of the meeting where we have six resolutions to consider. All six resolutions are ordinary resolutions for shareholder approval. 
resolutions will be conducted by way of a poll rather than by way of a show of hands. The first resolution is that the board is authorised to fix the remuneration of Deloitte as auditor for the ensuing financial year. The next three resolutions relate to the election of directors and the final two resolutions relate to the grant of performance rights to our two executive directors, Reese as Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer and Adrian as Chief Operating Officer. Vulcan's financial statements for the financial year ended 30 June 2022, together with the auditor's report, are in Vulcan's annual report, which is available on Vulcan's website. We also have hard copies here today, so please feel free to take a copy home with you. As I mentioned earlier, we will take questions on each resolution as they are presented to shareholders. Once voting has closed on the resolutions, we should have time for further Q&A. At that point, shareholders will have the opportunity to ask any general questions. I will now give my chairman's address. The 12 months to June 2022 was a historic year for Vulcan Steel. The company was floated on the ASX and the NZX in November 2021, as a result of which the number of shareholders increased from approximately 50 to now in excess of 1,300. Just as significantly, the company prospered during 2021-22 in a very challenging operating environment which included pandemic lockdowns and disrupted supply chains in both New Zealand and Australia. The company achieved record sales and record earnings in the year ended June. As a result of the efforts of our team, we materially exceeded our prospectus earnings forecast and we released three earnings upgrades between release of the prospectus in October of last year and the financial year end in June. That has enabled your company to declare dividends of 65 cents per share since the listing in November last year. This translates to more than a 10% gross dividend yield for our New Zealand and Australian shareholders based on our IPO issue price. The graphs on the screen illustrate, illustrate the absolute and relative total shareholder return achieved since listing. In addition to our dividends to shareholders, and despite a, a challenging stock market since listing, our share price also delivered strong relative performance. It was 31% ahead of our peer companies, 11% ahead of the ASX 300 index, and 22% ahead of the NZX50 gross index. A notable achievement. In his CEO address, Rees will elaborate on the detail of the results for the last financial year. Subsequent to the listing, the implementation of Vulcan's growth strategy in metals markets in New Zealand and Australia has continued. We have further pursued organic growth opportunities, as well as expanded into aluminium through the acquisition of Ulrich in August. This takes us into a new segment, and it expands our product offering. Ulrich operates at scale in aluminium distribution in both New Zealand and Australia. Reese will also provide more detail on Ulrich, an acquisition which the board considers to be an attractive step out for Vulcan. I would now like to make a few comments on governance matters. Following their decisions to retire, this is the last meeting that Peter Wells and Pip Greenwood will attend as directors. Peter co-founded Vulcan in 1995 with other shareholders. He drove the early success of the business in New Zealand before setting up Vulcan's operations in Australia in 2002. Having served as the company's executive director for many years, he retired from executive life in 2016, but continued his involvement with Vulcan as chairman until the middle of last year when I was invited to succeed him. 
Peter has chosen to retire at the end of this meeting and we will miss his contribution enormously. Just make a few personal observations. I, I first met Peter 18 months ago, but I'm very aware that many of those present here know him much better than I do. He was the catalyst for, for Vulcan starting business in 1995. He co-founded the company with three other shareholders, including Wayne Boyd, in which no single one shareholder had a majority shareholding. Peter was the only executive shareholder. As the business developed, a number of employees were invited to become shareholders, such that at the time of the IPO last year, the four founding shareholders had grown to almost 50. The opportunity for employees of a private company to become shareholders may be very common in technology startups these days, but was rare in new industrial businesses almost 30 years ago. That model created ownership, motivation and commitment because leaders saw the opportunity for reward from dividends from the company's earnings. Peter's generosity was again evident a few months ago when Peter and Mary gave each of more than 800 Vulcan employees $2,300 of Vulcan shares which recognised the contribution that everybody in the Vulcan team has made to the company's success. I thought this was a wonderful demonstration of Peter's belief in encouraging people to realise their full potential and to be rewarded accordingly. He is genuinely interested in the welfare of other people, an attribute that is key to Vulcan's success. In the past few months, Peter and his wife Mary have visited each of Vulcan's 29 sites in New Zealand and Australia to engage with current employees on the company's history and their involvement, and also obviously to wish them farewell. Peter has many and varied interests. We wish him well in pursuing those interests with his usual vigour and thank him for all he has done for the company. Thank you, Peter. Peter has kindly agreed to continue to be available to us, an offer he has generously made. And, and I'm sure in light of his knowledge of the history of the company, we will be in contact with you. Turning to Pip now, she joined the board of Vulcan in 2019 and using her considerable expertise and experience, contributed significantly to the preparation and execution of the company's initial public offering as well as to the acquisition of Ulrich. On behalf of the board and shareholders, I thank Pip for her service to Vulcan and wish her well in her future endeavours. Thanks, Pip. As a result of Peter's and Pip's decision, decisions and the appointment of Adrian Casey as a director in September, we are now in a position of having 50% of directors being independent. We have commenced a process of board renewal leading to the, re the recruitment and appointment of an additional independent director in order to restore a majority of independent directors. Next, I would like to recognise and acknowledge the efforts and contributions that all Vulcan employees have made in the first year of Vulcan as a listed company. It has been a most challenging year and the record financial results achieved attest to the way in which the company's people have managed through the challenges that we have all experienced. We are most fortunate to have leaders of the calibre of Rhys as Chief Executive, Adrian as Chief, Chief Operating Officer and Kayu as Chief Financial Officer at the helm of the company. Finally, I would like to th thank all shareholders for the support you have shown by investing in the company, whether at the time of the IPO or by subsequently buying in the market. You are assured of our efforts to continue to achieve superior returns by offering exceptional customer service and value. I will now ask Rhys to present his managing director's address. Thank you, Rhys. Uh, thank you, Russell. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone today, either in person or online. Uh, my name is Rhys Jones and I'm the Chief Executive of Vulcan Steel. 
A quick overview. Um, the financial year has been challenging and disruptive with the impact of COVID-related lockdowns and restrictions requiring all of our team to respond to these challenging circumstances. It is important to acknowledge the outstanding teamwork and positive attitude of all my colleagues in the last year as they maintained a laser focus on supporting our customers and solving problems as they arose due to COVID. The teamwork became tighter and the customer first culture stronger as each new challenge emerged. A highlight to exemplify this teamwork was the maintenance of our DIFOC performance, delivery in full on time, even when close contact stand down rules suddenly depleted team members. Colleagues from other units travelled in to help while maintaining staff worked all weekend to ensure customers were not impacted. The market. The overall market demand throughout the year was strong, but heavily disrupted due to COVID and staff shortages across the supply chain. The stop-start nature of product flow from mills to our end customers meant production planning and scheduling across the entire supply chain was disrupted. This resulted in delays, higher costs and inefficiency. Vulcan proactively increased stockholding to ensure product availability and was therefore able to maintain product availability to our existing and new customers. At the end of the financial year, supply chain challenges were easing while customers were typically making progress in reducing their backlog of work. Uh, as you can see from the slide here, I'm referring to this, um, the financial performance of the company is displayed. The record financial performance resulted from selling over 263,000 tonnes to over 12,000 customers. The breadth and depth of our Australasian customer base continued to grow while our stock management capability was beneficial as industry-wide supply chain disruptions occurred. The total revenue for the company reached a new record of just below $1 billion. Strong pricing disciplines in both the steel and metals division resulted in improved margins, which combined with effective operational cost control enabled an overall adjusted EBITDA of $243 million New Zealand to be achieved. This excellent result compares favourably with previous financial year being $110 million New Zealand dollars higher. The cash, cash conversion improvement of 700 basis points to 85% was another highlight. The overall adjusted net profit after tax increased by $77 million to $142 million New Zealand dollars. Another key financial metric Vulcan places great focus on is return on capital employed. Despite the increased investment in working capital due to higher inventory co costs and inventory levels, as referenced above, their return on capital employed improved by 13% to 37%. The record full year 22 earnings result, coupled with high cash generation, has enabled Vulcan to acquire Ulrich Aluminium on a debt funded basis. As the table shows, Vulcan's pro forma net debt to EBITDA cover was approximately 1.4 times as at the 30th of June 2022 inclusive of the acquisition price for Ulrich Aluminium. Vulcan signed a conditional agreement in July to acquire Ulrich Aluminium, which was transacted on the 1st of August. The purchase price was recently finalised at $149 million New Zealand dollars, comprising $128 million of net tangible assets and $41 million New Zealand dollars of net debt. This excludes $20 million New Zealand in excess working capital, which will be reduced that will be funded by deferred settlement in the first half of 2023 calendar year. Ulrich Aluminium includes 41 sales units across Australasia and an extrusion plant in each country. Aluminium and stainless steel have a large number of shared customers, which will enable Volcom over time to increase our customer numbers by leveraging a much larger sales unit network through our well-established hybrid unit model. The metals division will now include aluminium and will have a similar annualised revenue to the steel division of approximately 600 million New Zealand dollars. With regard to uh, guidance, uh, Vulcan's first quarter uh, 23 earnings performance has been consistent with the company's full year 23 guidance range uh, given at our 22 result in August. Our new aluminium business made a positive earnings contribution in the first two months following our acquisition on the 1st of August. Based on our first quarter trading outcome, we reaffirm our full year EBITDA guidance of New Zealand dollars 215 to 235 million, 
We expect the conditions we experienced in the first quarter FY23 to continue due to the impact of rising interest rates on general and general economic activity following a record FY22. Our team is fully engaged in optimising earnings through volume, margin and cost efficiency management. We remain positive on the opportunities ahead in our aluminium business. I'd like to hand over to Russell. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Rhys. So do we have any questions on any matter that Rhys or I discussed? I can't see any hands up. Am I missing any? No. Uh, and just a reminder that we do have time for additional general questions following voting on the resolutions, if anything occurs to you after this. Also, would you please, oh no, actually we can go on. Are there any questions from any shareholders present with us at Eden Park? No, we will now address other questions online. Zubair, do we have any questions online? Confirming there's no questions online. Thanks very much. As there are no further questions, I will now proceed to the formal business of today's meeting. As I mentioned earlier, there are six resolutions being put to shareholders to vote on today. All six resolutions were set out in detail in the notice of meeting and the proxy voting form that you will have received. All resolutions are ordinary shareholder resolutions, which means that to pass each resolution, it must be approved by more than 50% of the votes of those shareholders entitled to vote and voting on the resolution. The notice of meeting will be taken as read. But just as a reminder, voting entitlements have been determined as at 9pm New Zealand time on the 18th of October, which was Tuesday. Registered shareholders at that time are the only persons entitled to vote and only the shares registered in those shareholders' names at that time may be voted at this meeting. Votes can be lodged during the meeting today or by proxies. For your proxy to be effective, it must have been received by 2 p.m. New Zealand time last Tuesday. The proxy votes that have been received by LINK or submitted online via LINK's platform prior to the start of this annual meeting will be set out on the slides shown for each resolution. For some context, the current number of Vulcan shares on issue is 131,408,000 572 ordinary shares. Voting on all resolutions today will be conducted by poll only. Vulcan share registry provider, Link Market Services, will conduct the poll. Votes will be counted after the end of the meeting and the results will be published on the ASX, the NZX and Vulcan's investor website. For shareholders voting online, you will be able to cast your vote using the electronic voting card received when online registration is validated. To vote, you will need to click Get Voting Card within the online meeting platform. You will be asked to enter your shareholder or proxy number to validate. Please then mark your voting card in the way you wish to vote by clicking for, against, or abstain on the voting card. Once you have made your selection, please click Submit Vote on the bottom of the card to lodge your vote. For those who are voting at Eden Park today, please use the voting paper handed to you at registration to the meeting. The Link Market Services team will ensure that your voting forms are collected at the appropriate time. As indicated on the proxy voting form and in the notice of meeting, my intention as chair is to vote all discretionary or undirected proxies held by me in favour of each resolution. For any questions relating to specific resolutions, we will answer these as we move through each resolution. Just a reminder that any general questions will be responded to after the formal business of the meeting has been completed. I will endeavour to address as many of the more frequently raised relevant questions 
as possible at that time. If we do receive multiple questions that are similar in nature, I may choose to amalgamate them into one or answer the broader of those questions, which will then hopefully cover off those other questions. To ensure questions reach us in time, I do recommend that online participants submit your questions as soon as you can, if you have not already done so. Starting with the first re resolution. I move as an ordinary resolution that the directors of Vulcan are authorised to fix the fees and expenses of Deloitte Limited as Vulcan's auditor for the financial year ending 30 June 2023. The board unanimously recommends you vote in favour of resolution one. We will now address any shareholder questions relating to resolution one. If not already submitted, I would like to invite any online shareholders to submit any written questions relating to this resolution now. I will now pause for a moment to allow enough time for you to submit any questions and to allow us time to review any questions received. Are there any questions in the audi audience? Oh. Zubair, any questions online? We have no questions on this resolution. Thank you. I note that no questions relating to resolution one were emailed or submitted prior to the meeting. Um, so we'll go forward. I will now, no, nothing on the online platform. Okay, thank you. Are there, as there are no further or no questions, voting on this resolution will proceed to a poll. We will now move to resolution two. This resolution relates to the re-election of Adrian Casey as a director. Adrian has 40 years of metal industry experience, including more than 20 years with Vulcan. He's deeply experienced in industry operations, procurement, supply chain, and he knows the global industry structure very well. He led Vulcan's greenfield entry into the Victorian market in 2004. It is not to say, and that was very successful, I should note, it is not exaggerating to say that Adrian has made an enormous contribution to the company's success as well as its culture. The board deliberated on his appointment as a director, uh, more clearly perhaps in this case because there's a bit of orthodoxy around that having more than one executive director is excessive. Notwithstanding that, we were unanimously in favour of capturing his industry experience and expertise at the board level. Um, but in addition to that, Adrian is a guy with a, a very great capacity uh, for thinking through things and forthrightly expressing his views. Adrian, is there anything else that you might like to add? Oh, thanks, Russell. <clears throat> Look, I'd just like to make a brief comment. <clears throat> Firstly, it's an honour to be invited to join the Vulcan board and be part of the successful Vulcan of the past 24 years. Peter's vision 27 years ago of what Vulcan would look like remains strong to this day. Business has and will continue to change. We can manage that. But our challenge as we grow further will be maintaining Vulcan's great culture. This has been built up over a long period of time and sets the platform for our future. Our principle and ethos or values we have at Vulcan apply to everyone, be it a person loading a truck or a director. And I consider these crucial to maintaining a strong company and enabling a, few, a successful future. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Adrian. I now move as an ordinary resolution that Adrian Casey, who was appointed as a director of Vulcan by the board on 13 September 2022, be elected as a director of Vulcan. If not already submitted, I would now like to invite any shareholders who are, attend who are attending the meeting online to submit any questions regarding this resolution to elect Adrian as a director. I will pause for a moment to receive your questions.
I note that no questions relating to Resolution 2 were emailed or submitted prior to the meeting. Are there any questions on Resolution 2 from shareholders who are in attendance at Eden Park today? No show of hands. Okay. Uh, no questions from online? Nope. We have no questions on this resolution. Thanks, Zubair. As there are no questions voting on this resolution, we'll proceed to a poll. Now we move to our next resolution, which is Resolution 3. This resolution relates to the re-election of Wayne Boyd as a director of Vulcan. Wayne has served as a director of Vulcan since incorporation of the company. The board, other than Wayne, recommends Wayne to you as a Vulcan director and unanimously supports his re-election. I will now ask Wayne to say a few words about himself and his role on the board. I'm just used to standing at the lectern, so don't be afraid. I'm going to be here for a long time. I think it's wonderful that we're all here on what is truly a memorable occasion for Vulcan, and I feel really privileged to just be part of that. I wanted to make two comments before um, speaking about a potential re-election, and they are Vulcan's transition uh, from a private to a listed entity continues. But we haven't got it done. And for Vulcan, it is critical that the core elements that have enabled our success as a private company are not suffocated as a consequence of a listing. Second one, the Vulcan culture, as Adrian has mentioned, underpins all that Vulcan, uh, that is Vulcan and in a nod to Peter's uh, southern area. Like all good things, it has taken time to evolve to what it is today. That culture requires continual nurturing by all of the Vulcan team. Therefore, succession at the board and leadership level within Vulcan, likewise, requires time to ensure that the gains made and respected are enhanced and enhanced are not lost, are not lost. I strongly believe the resolutions before you today reflect Vulcan's considered response to ameliorate the risks of transition and succession. Then why reappoint me? First, I'm not independent, and I do not seek re-election by virtue of shareholding. Your decision should rely on the merits of my continuing as a Vulcan director. My governance record reflects my awareness that the appointment as a director comes with a stewardship-like responsibility for the social license that allows a company to operate for the investment made by equity and debt participants, and for the employ employees, the investment they make every day for the company, including their health and well-being. I have the capacity and experience to fulfil my duties as a Vulcan director, including maintaining a sharp focus on those two risks I outlined. In conclusion, I just want to make a public thanks from me and my family, and I'm sure lots of other families and employees would endorse this, to Peter and Mary for the opportunity to participate in all that is in fact Vulcan. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Wayne. Very eloquent address. As many of you will know, Wayne is a veteran of the New Zealand business scene, and he brings that experience and perspective to the boardroom in just the way that he addressed you a couple of moments ago. In my view, we're very fortunate to have him as a member of the board of Vulcan. I now move as an ordinary resolution 
that Wayne Boyd, who retires as a director of Vulcan by rotation and is eligible for re-election, be re-elected as a director of Vulcan. Again, now it is time to invite shareholders joining online to ask any questions that they may have regarding this resolution. I will pause for a moment to receive your questions. I note that no questions relating to Resolution 3 were emailed or submitted prior to the meeting. Are there any questions from shareholders with us at Eden Park today? Oh. Uh, there are no questions online, Zabir, is that right? Yep, there's no questions on Thank this you. resolution. Very good. Thank you. As there are no questions, voting on this resolution will proceed to a poll. That now takes us to resolution four. As this resolution relates to my re-election as a director of Vulcan, I will ask Wayne to put this resolution to the meeting. Right. Thank you, Russell. As Russell mentioned, he retires at this meeting and offers himself up for election as a director. The board, other than Russell, recommends Russell to you as a Vulcan director and unanimously supports his re-election. I will now invite Russell to provide us with a brief background on himself and his role as chair and as a member of both of our board committees. Before I invite him to speak, I would say that Russell's been fantastic in um, dealing coming into a company. Lots of us have been there a long time. He's carried the um, burden of being a chair through an IPO, contributes fantastically at the board, runs a good board meeting, un has got under the skin of the company and understands it well and contributes significantly to both those committees that he's on. I think he's been a valuable um, addition uh, to Vulcan and he shares our values and principles. Thank you, Wayne. Um, not sure how I can follow that, um, other than to say that I joined the board in June of last year, um, so I still have a lot to learn about the company. Um, I have a background as a, or trained as an accountant, uh, worked in finance for most of my executive career, uh, almost exclusively with ASX listed companies. Um, I lived in uh, Asia, Europe and the United States as well as working in those countries for a total of 15 years. Um, and I think one of the things that I'd like to think I can bring to Vulcan is um, a reasonable global perspective. I follow financial markets and, and capital markets in particular closely. Um, those are probably more relevant now to Vulcan uh, as a listed company than they were as a private company. Um, I'm still on uh, other boards. I'm on the board uh, of CIMIC, which is the uh, former Leighton Group, um, which is now privately owned by a Spanish entity just from earlier this year. Um, and I'm also on the board of Reliance Worldwide Corporation, um, which is a plumbing supply company, uh, Australian-based, but um, with very large operations in Europe and, and the US. Um, so I have a background in construction and building materials as well as in resources, um, all of which I think are relevant to, to Vulcan's business. Um, and I've greatly enjoyed being part of, the, of this company, um, particularly the IPO process was, was a challenging one for us and I think we all worked through that uh, very, very successfully. Um, but I've still got, as I said, I've still got a lot to learn about the company and I'd really welcome serving a, another term and it would be a privilege to actually be, continue to be involved in, in the company. Um, so I put my candidacy before you for consideration um, and see how it turns out. I don't think you need to apologise, Russell. As I said, good things take time. <clears throat> Um, thanks very much, Russell. I now move as an ordinary resolution that Russell Chanu, who retires as a director of Vulcan by rotation and is eligible for re-election, be re-elected as a director of Vulcan. 
I note that no questions relating to this Resolution 4 were emailed or submitted prior to today's meeting. Do we have any questions from the shareholders with us today at Eden Park? Doesn't appear so. Very quiet group. Zabir, have any shareholders participating online submitted any questions relating to Russell's re-election? Confirming we have no questions on this resolution. Thank you. As there are no further questions, voting on this resolution will recede, proceed to a poll. Thank you. Thank you again, Wayne. Turning now to resolution five, I move as an ordinary resolution that for the purposes of ASX listing rule 1014 and for all other purposes, the issue of 221,799 performance rights to Vulcan's Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Rhys Jones, under Vulcan's Financial Year 23 Long-Term Incentive Plan and on the terms and conditions set out in explanatory notes in the notice of meeting be approved. We will now address any shareholder questions submitted relating to Resolution 5. I note that no questions relating... I'm sorry, is there? Oh, I apologise, I missed. Um, yes, can you just explain the nature of those rights? Um, like when they're in the money, etc. Sorry, when they're in the money? Well, um, the share price is well down at the moment. Um, yep. I'm just wondering, can you give us an explanation of, uh, presumably he, he, there's an exercise price for, with the rights? Yes, there um, is. Yep. Can you tell us what that yep. is? Yep. Um, so the, the grants are in respect of performance rights which, which may uh, subject to performance of the company, and I'll explain the two hurdles in a moment, um, which, which may uh, convert to shares. Um, and they are tested over a three or at the end of a three year term for each grant that's made. Uh, and they, the, the two hurdles relate to the return on capital employed and also the total return to shareholders over that three year period. And whether or not they vest, which is the term that's used when they, if they convert from being rights to shares, whether or not they vest actually depends upon the, the uh, performance against those two hurdles. Um, and uh, we granted some rights, um, to the executive leadership team prior to the IPO, and there's an intention that rights be granted each 12 months, subject to shareholder approval for the two executive directors. So is, does that satisfy your question, or do you, do you, would you like more detail? Okay, thank you. I, I might add um, an important feature of of Vulcan's uh, executive remuneration packages or leadership remuneration packages is that um, there's a base salary for a fixed remuneration and there's this, uh, these grants made under the long-term incentive program. The company does not have a short-term incentive program for um, executive management. The, the, those sorts of STIs, as they're called, are very common in most companies, but Vulcan doesn't, doesn't have them uh, because we're, the team is very focused on long-term performance rather than short-term performance. And we believe that the way we've structured the remuneration packages is, is more aligned with shareholder value than uh, having an STI which can confuse that alignment. Are there any other questions in this forum? Okay. Um, I note that no questions are forthcoming. Um, are there any questions on, online, Zubair? We have no questions on this resolution. Okay, thank you. 
As there are no further or no, yeah, no further questions, um, voting on this resolution will proceed to a poll. Resolution six is the final resolution for today's meeting. I move as an ordinary resolution that for the purposes of ASX listing rule 1014 and for all other purposes, the issue of 55,309 performance rights to Vulcan's Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director, Adrian Casey, under Vulcan's Financial Year 23 Long-Term Incentive Plan and on the terms and conditions set out in the explanatory notes in the notice of meeting be approved. Let us now consider any shareholder questions relating to this resolution six. Are there any? No, I don't believe so. Any questions online, Zubair? Okay. No questions on this resolution. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, voting on this resolution will proceed to a poll. That concludes our discussion on the formal business of today's meeting. I now encourage you all to please cast your vote. Please ensure that you have cast your vote on all resolutions. I will now pause to allow you time to finalise those votes. People have had time now. For those with us at Eden Park, members of the Link Market team will now collect your voting cards. Please ensure you hand your voting card in to ensure that your vote is counted. For those shareholders online, voting will close five minutes after the annual meeting closes. A timer will appear on your screen and will provide a countdown showing you how much time you have left until online voting closes. Once the votes have been counted, the results of the voting will be released on the ASX and the NZX. We expect this to be later today. A copy of the voting announcement will also be available on our investor website. That concludes the formal business of this annual meeting. Now we move to a very important part of this annual meeting, which is the time for shareholders to ask any general questions that you may have or to make any comments. I note that we received no general questions prior to this meeting. In terms of process, we will ask for any questions from those who are in attendance with us at Eden Park and then move on to any online questions submitted during this meeting. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, yes, with Peter retiring, are you intending to replace him with another director? Uh, well, we've reflect, uh, effectively replaced one uh, by the appointment of Adrian um, and hopefully his re-election today. Um, and uh, we are in the process of recruiting uh, an, a further independent director, um, but that will take some little time. I don't want to be held to a, to a date on that, but we are, we are underway with the process that will lead to the appointment of another independent director, which would then restore the position which we consider to be desirable um, to have a majority of independent directors. Does that satisfy your question? Yep. Thank you. I hope by the t next time we get together at, at next year's meeting, we'll be, uh, we'll be in that position. Mm. Any further questions from this room? No? Looks satisfied. Um, Zubair, are there any further questions or any questions online? Yes, we've received one question online. 
the question is, could the team elaborate on the rationale behind the company's dividend policy? Why return so much cash to shareholders given the success of the company to grow future earnings via acquisitions? Thanks to the team, Peter and Pip. Okay, can, could you just repeat the middle part of that? I might have missed it. Could the team elaborate on the rationale behind, behind the company's dividend policy? Why return so much cash to shareholders given the success of the company to grow future earnings via acquisitions? Okay, thank you, yep. Um, so this is a company that um, does throw off quite a lot of cash. It's, uh, it has superior financial returns. Um, and if I interpret the question correctly, I, I think what it's asking is why do we not retain those earnings rather than distribute them and reinvest in the business or in expansion through acquisition because we have a very good track record in Vulcan of actually uh, growing the business and, and achieving returns. Um, I think the board's view on that would be that um, the optimal position is that we do both, i.e. We, we grow the company uh, we make acquisitions, we have organic growth which is successful and we can at the same time return uh, earnings to shareholders in the form of dividends and the company's dividend policy as disclosed in the prospectus last year and it hasn't changed is to dis distribute between 60 and 80 per cent of our annual earnings in the form of dividends. Um, so Nirvana, I think, is do both, growth plus uh, enhanced size, scale and, and success. Um, so as long as our growth, uh, which requires investment, is not constrained by uh, a shortfall in funding or, cap or capital, then we can achieve that position and that, that is the position that we aim for. Having said that, uh, dividend policy and the le level of dividends in a company is constantly kept under review. And if we felt that the growth of the company was being constrained by us perhaps distributing excessive amounts of dividends, then we would look very seriously at obviously changing the policy. But, but we don't see that uh, in, the, in the near term at all. So I hope that answers the shareholders' question but it's a very good one. Uh, has the board considered a, a dividend reinvestment policy? Uh, yes, sir. Just for anybody who didn't hear that, it was a question around um, dividend reinvestment. Um, we, we don't have a dividend reinvestment plan in this company. Um, it wasn't something that was, I recall, being contemplated at the time of the IPO. Um, I should say that the corporate community is uh, very divided over the, um, the benefits or otherwise of, uh, of dividend reinvestment plans. Um, they seem to work for some companies when they are generating a lot of uh, franking credits in Australia or imputation credits in New Zealand. Uh, and their capacity to distribute those is constrained by capital needs. Um, so financial services companies are the ones that seem to use dividend reinvestment plans more commonly now than used to be the case perhaps for others as well. And in addition, when dividend reinvestment plans have a discount to the market price, they actually become dilutive for existing shareholders. So that is the strongest argument um, I, I know of uh, against dividend reinvestment plans. Um, I, I think it's a pretty important point. Significant benefit, perhaps, for shareholders who use the dividend reinvestment plan, but at the expense of other shareholders of the company. And so I think there's an issue there of equitable treatment for the same group of shareholders. Does that answer your question? Maybe one that doesn't respond well if you're a fan of DRPs, but... Um, well, you don't have to discount the shares in a dividend reinvestment plan. Yep. Which, that, which would, you know, 
argue against that, that particular position? It does deal with the discount issue. I, I agree with that. But it, um, it, it, it still is... I, I think it's really only attractive when, when a company has blocked dividend uh, or imputation or, or franking credits. Um, so, but if if you if shareholders say you'd like us to consider it, then we'll certainly take it on board. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Anything online, Zubair? Are we still? And there are no further online no questions. questions. Okay. Thank you. And nothing here. All right, so we, we shall move on. So on behalf of your Michael board, I would like to thank you, all our shareholders, for joining us and for your participation today. We really appreciate your support. For those with us in Auckland, we invite you to stay for some light refreshments, and I now formally declare the annual meeting closed. Thank you very much. <laughs>